The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Pendleton, Oregon, on your new fire apparatus, job number 30658. Please utilize this job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting down at the front bumper, on the passenger and driver side, mounted in the face of the bumper, you'll find two air horns. Located in the center, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Moving up onto the top of the bumper, you'll find tubbed storage for your front bumper pre-connect. Moving all the way to the driver's side on the face, you'll find your mechanical siren. Moving up onto the body, you'll find your turn indicator marker light. Moving just inward of that location, you'll find your headlight cluster. The headlight cluster contains the low beam on the outer edges and the high beam on the inside. Moving up from that location is where you're going to find your emergency warning lights. There are four forward-facing lights. Underneath the Pierce logo is where you'll find the latch for your hood. And then moving up to the seamless one-piece windshield, you'll find three windshield wipers. Moving further up to the brow, you'll five, find five running lights. And located in the center, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. And at the very top of the apparatus, you'll find your emergency light bar. Moving to the side of the apparatus, you'll find a dual function mirror. On the upper portion, you'll find it being flat, and on the bottom section, you'll find convexed. A couple images here with close-ups, once again, of the headlights and the emergency warning lights. Let's take a look at the tub storage location. You'll find an inch and a half swivel discharge located in this spot. And then this is the access point just under the Pierce logo is the latch for releasing the hood. Once we've released the hood and lifted it up, you'll find the windshield wiper fill location. This is going to be on the passenger side. As we move over to the driver's side, you'll find instructions here for the cab raise and cab lower. The yellow handled with the black switch on the top, this is going to be the mechanism which allows you to power the motor which will raise or lower the cab. The red switch will be the indicator for lower or raise. And on the far right, you'll find the fill location for your power steering Dextron fluid. Moving to the side of the apparatus, you'll find your shoreline inlet. This is a 20 amp auto eject plug. When plugged into it, this will activate the auto charger for your Kusmal electronics battery charger. You'll also find an emergency warning light just over the front tire. Just underneath the pump panel on the driver's side, you'll find the foam pump discharge drain and also the foam pump intake drain. Let's now move to the pump panel itself. We'll start at the very top section here with the crosslay, number one and number two crosslays. These are yellow and white in color and they are foam capable. Moving further back, you'll find the two and a half inch discharge. It is also foam capable and it's gray in color. Because of those hoses, the crosslay is coming off in the elevated position. You'll find this warning label regarding entanglement down to the lower section, you'll find this warning that only trained personnel should operate this vehicle. Moving to the right, you'll find a warning label here regarding pressurized caps and the associated hazards with removing them, and also a warning label that you should not ride on the side of your apparatus. We're going to go ahead and start in the upper left-hand corner here with some of the uh, control modules, first starting with the Husky foam system. This is your Husky 3 foam system. Moving to the right, you'll find your foam level indicator. In the gray areas where you're going to find your master intake and master discharge, your test gauge test ports for vacuum and pressure, and then your pump boss. Let's go ahead and cover some of these areas here on your Husky foam system. First, there is an on off switch. It's the green push button. Just beneath that, you'll find the digital readout for the foam percentage. There is an increase and decrease button. Those are both gray. And you can see some information here uh, just between those for hold increase and hold for decrease. To the right, you'll find the prime for your Husky foam system. And then further to the right, you'll find the system status. And the instructions for that are just above that that indicate what that system status is indicating. 
Moving to the right of that location, you're going to find this warning audible speaker. And we'll t cover a few more items here in this area. This is your intake relief valve. You can change your pressure increase or decrease, and there is a gauge just above that. Moving to the right, you'll find your tank fill recirculating line. And then further to the right, you'll find your engine cooler. This is a twist, not a pull. Just down in the lower section in blue, you'll find your water tank level from full three quarter, half quarter to refill. And then you'll find the air trident primer push to prime. And then you'll find some priming instructions just beneath that at a minimum of 1000 RPMs. Just beneath that, you'll find your tank to pump. And then we'll cover a few more items. First, let's start with your pump boss. Starting in the upper left hand corner of that, you'll find the check engine. If that is illuminated, it will be amber in color. In the center, you'll find a digital readout for your RPMs. And then further to the right, you'll find a stop engine. If that's lit, it will be in red. You will have a menu button in blue. Subsequent readings all the way across from oil, pressure, water temperature, and also battery. Further to the right, you'll find a red silence. If you receive a warning or a check engine, you can silence the audible alarm. And down in the lower in yellow, you'll find either the selection for pressure or RPM. Once you've engaged the pump properly, you should see the throttle ready. It will come up and provide you a digital readout. Moving to the right in the green area, you'll find your preset button. And then as we move further down, you'll find the idle button, which is if you push, you can push the entire knob back in to move to the idle position. This knob does move from left and to right for increase or decreasing. Once again, to the right, you'll find that audible speaker. It does have an adjustment where you can twist it to dampen. We'll now talk a little bit about this warning label. Once again, only trained personnel should be operating this equipment. Just beneath that, you'll find your Pierce maintenance schedule, and we'll go over that next. This placard provided by Pierce while testing provides 150, 200, and 250 PSI, the GPM on the left-hand side, and then your RPMs on the right-hand side. This is when you're doing your maintenance checks. Let's go ahead and take a look further down to the right. You'll find your Watrous placard. This is going to give you the pump model, which is a CSU transmission model which is a C20D and then also date of manufacture capacity and hydrostatic. In the upper right you'll find the serial number and also the ratio 2.46. Down at the lower corner you're going to find the color coded and also labeled discharge drains. Further to the right of the discharges you'll find the minimum operation maintenance schedule. These are your checks for operational weekly and also six months of 100 operating hours. Let's move just to the right. We're going to find the manifold drain and also the auxiliary side drain. These are also levers. And as we move further to the right, this red lever you're going to find is your foam system. This is for draft foam tank. And then you'll find the inlet down at the very bottom. We'll also cover what's in this compartment. Let's first go ahead and open the compartment. On the left hand side in the door, you'll find instructions here. This is for the horizontal foam operations for filling and also for operations of that. That is the yellow handle. You'll also find in the upper uh, image here where the arrow is pointing, this is going to be your foam tank drain. This is a twist. Let's go ahead and cover a couple items here as we move through the compartments. First, you'll find LED lighting on both sides of every entry point. You'll also find on your pullout tray on the right hand side is the release mechanism. You'll also find adjustable shelves that are currently in a fixed position. Let's go ahead and move further back. This is your 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. It is a blue cap. Just above that you'll find bottle storage for two bottle SCBA bottles. And then as we move further back you'll find the two locations here in front and to the rear of the rear wheel for bottle storage locations. Located directly over the tire, you'll find your side emergency warning light. And then as we move further up to the very top, you'll find your pegboard. And then down at the very bottom, this will be the fill location for your diesel. This is ultra low sulfur diesel. It is a silver cap. This is the SCBA bottles near the diesel compartment. 
and then we'll move further back to the rear compartment once again this is the release mechanism for this shelf that will pull out and then you also have adjustable shelves just underneath that you'll find your folding wheel chocks the silver release mechanism will release your wheel chocks we're now in the rear of the apparatus and we'll start with the brake turn reverse lights and also emergency warning light just above that you have an additional switch just inside that cupped area for all of your lights to the rear and then you also have a warning label here regarding riding on the back of the apparatus there are two fold down steps on this side you also have step lights as we're talking safety labels let's talk about this one once again this is your warning regarding pressurized caps and the associated hazards above from that you find hose coming out from this location so there is an entanglement warning and then as we move further to the left you'll find a two and a half inch rear discharge located directly in the center is your backup camera and then just above that is your traffic advisor you'll also find you have sufficient grab handles for moving a loft of your apparatus on the passenger side and driver side and also directly in the center let's go ahead and take a look this is your hose beds these are the dividers you can find that they are a grab handle located here and then they also have LED lighting here which is controlled by that switch down below you do have an adjustable hose bed moving further to the right you'll find additional steps and also as we move down to the bottom this compartment is where you'll find an additional rollout compartment shelf and as we move to the right you'll find a 24 foot extension ladder a 14 foot roof ladder and then you'll also find a 10 foot folding attic ladder there is also a six and an eight foot pike pole located in this compartment let's move upward you'll find an additional storage location here this is your location for your long board storage and additional long tools we'll go ahead and move around to the side of the apparatus once again a pull out shelf here at the bottom this is the release mechanism it's just a simple push to release as we move to the side of the apparatus same configuration as the other side two bottle storage locations front and rear of the rear wheel and then in between you have an emergency warning light located in the very top you also have pegboard for additional tool storage let's move now to the next compartment pull out shelf adjustable shelf on top and LED lighting and now we'll move uh, to the midsection here of your pump once again hose coming off from those cross lays you will find an entanglement warning label you also have a pressure cap warning label here the associated hazards with pressures caps and then you also have not writing on the side of the apparatus warning label because there is fall uh, possibility we'll talk a little bit behind this access door here which is a pan door gains access to behind the pump you'll also find your large diameter pump intake which is the Pierce American flag Eagle logo and then you have your large diameter which is the green discharge moving further to the right you'll find an additional discharge in orange this is a two and a half inch discharge and at the very bottom you'll find all the associated drains for each of those valves which are also color coded this is your access point here behind uh, to gain access to the pump panel as we move forward we'll find additional uh, steps on the left hand side that fold down and then here's a close-up of those drains let's go ahead and move forward now this is the midsection just to the rear of the cab you'll find the cross lays and as we go up into the dunnage area this is going to be your foam pump for your husky foam system there's also a hydraulic reservoir located here with a fill location as we move on top of the apparatus once again in the dunnage area you'll find this is the location for your master stream device your deluge and then you also have an LED work light moving also up onto the top you will find all of these yellow diamonds these are reflective to assist firefighters so when they're aloft they do not accidentally walk off to the edge of the apparatus you'll also find your foam tank fill location and also your tank fill for water let's move through a couple items here on the side you'll find first these two latches these are to remove your rigid suction hoses and as we move inside the cab you'll find at all points of entry for all personnel warning labels here regarding the use of safety belts and safety instructions 
you will find the red assist firefighter to gain inside the cab. That's what that handle is for. And then you'll also find your red seat belts, which are easily visibly identifiable. Located in the center is your daily checks. Those are for your oil and transmission. There's also a light just inside there to make it easier to see. As we move through the cab, we'll talk a little bit about you have two forward facing seats, which house SCBAs. And then you also have two rear facing seats, which house SCBAs. Your air conditioning unit is directly above. General view here looking from the rear to the front of your apparatus. And now let's move up to the very front door of the officer side. Once again, point of entry for personnel, you'll find these caution and warning labels. In between the latch here to open the door, you'll find the locking mechanism. And then you'll also find your automatic windows. This is the retract and um, raise. As we look into the cab, you're gonna find this warning label here regarding that you should seek the owner's manual for instruction, but this is your SRS, which is your supplemental restraint system and airbag. Do not block this area. Once again, side of entry here, you'll find those warning labels. As we look down to the floor, you'll find your electric siren. This is your foot pedal for that. And then we'll go ahead and move now up to the center area where you'll find your air horn and also your mechanical siren. These are both push buttons. As we move to the rear section of this area, you're gonna find two 12 volt access points for, uh, these are the round barrel style. And then you'll also find these throughout the apparatus. This is a warning not to remove that there are loose wiring behind this and they are clearly identified as to what those loose wiring are. Located in the center of the cab overhead is where you'll find your do not move apparatus. This is a yellow flashing light indicating that you have a door or a compartment open and not to move the apparatus. And then above that, you'll find push on, push off red and white lights. Let's go ahead and start now into the driver's side. Once again, points of entry. So we have warning labels posted here. And then at the very bottom on the uh, right foot or ankle area, you'll find this yellow placard for the operator. There's also a warning label here regarding the use of seat belts. And let's go ahead and start with this Pierce manufactured placard. First, this is a Pierce stock unit. It has the job number of 30658, gross vehicle weight ratings. It also has all of your tire pressures for cold inflation, and it has your VIN number and also information on fluid capacities. You will find an air inlet. This is just in between the step well. And then as we move up into the cab area itself, you'll find your mechanical siren foot pedal. Moving just about knee height of the operator, you'll find these tech module plugins. This is for your tech module. You'll find this green one for your engine transmission ABS diagnostic port. And then as we move down further, you'll find ABS and engine diagnostic switches. And then just at the very bottom is where you'll find your regen inhibit and DPF regen switch. Let's move just slightly up from this location. This is gonna be your master battery switch. This will turn on and energize all of your electronics. At the very top, you'll find your ignition, start, and flashers for your four-way flasher or hazard lights. On the steering column, you'll have a tilt. And then you also have just above that, you have your turn indicator. Let's go ahead and cover a couple items here on the dash itself. Let's start first in the upper left side. You'll find this switch, which is EM, which stands for Emergency Master. You have your headlights for parking lights and headlights. And then to the right, you'll find a dimmer switch for your panel lights. This is Brighton and Dim. Let's go ahead and go through the functions of the gauges. Starting in the left, you have your transmission, oil, you have a DEF level, and you have your water temperature. Located in the center, you'll find your tachometer and also your speedometer. To the right, you'll find the volts. You'll also find front and rear air pressures and also your fuel. Located above and below the speedometer, you'll find a digital, a digital information display. Let's move just to the right here, general view of the cab. And then we'll go through some of these items individually. First, starting with the left-hand side, this is your system parking brake, push, to release, pull to apply. On the right, you'll find your backup camera monitor. And then as we move further to the right, you'll find the Allison transmission pad. And then just in between the select and monitor, there is a digital readout for the gear that you are actually positioned in. 
Moving to the right, you'll find an engine brake on and off with settings of low, medium, and high, and also mirror heat. Moving up to the top, you'll find the front scene, driver side scene, passenger side scene, and as we move down to the very bottom, you'll see these blank black switches. These are all future switch locations if they are needed, and it also consists of your load manager. We're now down to the very bottom. There's a caution here regarding disengage the retarder when the vehicle is on wet or slippery surfaces. And now we'll talk about your pump positions here. First, green indicators for pump engaged and OK to pump. Those are two green indicators. Those must both be lit for you to properly engage the pump. On the left, there are instructions from road to pump and pump to road. Just above that and slightly to the right is where you'll find your left and right mirror controls. And then as we move uh, to the very center, you'll find your climate control. Let's go ahead and move overhead of the operator. Let's focus in on the left-hand side of the image. You'll find this yellow placard. This is from Pierce when it left the manufacturer. It's indicating that you have a height of 10 feet, 2 inches, length 31 feet, 10 inches, and a gross vehicle weight rating of 43,500 pounds. If you make any changes to any of these, please change this placard. Overhead of the operator, you'll find the emergency master, roof light, front warning, and side warning. Moving down to the next set of switches, you'll find the lower rear warning, upper rear warning, high beam flash, and then you also have a future switch location. Moving further to the right, you'll find the siren brake, air horn, and then you have five, uh, I'm sorry, six additional future switch locations. Let's go ahead and uh, move further to the right. This is where you're going to find the Whelan Traffic Advisor. And then moving all the way to the far right in the center area, you'll find your siren. But what I would really like to point out is this is your Pierce seatbelt information. Red indicating that you can see someone is in the seat and they are not belted. Green indicating they're in the seat, belted. Let's take a general view to the rear of the apparatus. You can see the two forward-facing SCBA seats. Um, these seats are the PS6 and then you have the release mechanism uh, on the actual SCBA. Point out that you do have red seat belts here. That is for visual indications that you have them on. These are the two rear facing seats and as we move to the very center seats underneath you'll find an additional storage location and this is where you'll find when you're plugged into shore power this outlet will activate and your battery charging system. Congratulations Pendleton, Oregon on your new fire apparatus job number 30658. If you have any questions as to the content of this video or further questions about your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Congratulations.